And not a lot of people could be like, oh yeah, I've heard the country like at least seven times before the age of 20. Try to call me down. I feel like I'm drowning. Control freak. Control me. So I started playing the drums when I was nine because my parents had friends and they had a drum kit. Her friend's parents were like, hey, we should take you and our son to sit in on a drum lesson just so you can watch him because it seems like you like being around them. I <laughs> went to go sit in on the lesson. The teacher let me play the drums for a second and he was just like, well, you're a natural. You should take lessons with me. And I was like, you might've just been saying that so you can get lessons out of a young, young bacon, but I, I, it meant a lot to me. So I, I started taking lessons from there and never looked back. My parents, saw that there's a light in you that needs to be fostered and just like actually looked into and so I got into theater and I played Ariel in The Little Mermaid. It's before I went emo. I was into singing because I did choir and my choir teacher before she left, she literally held me by the shoulders, looked me in the eye and said like, don't stop singing. And I took that and I never stopped. When I was 15, my mom and my dad and I were driving home and we passed by this complex. I just saw Big School of Rock. So I was like, oh my God, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> so my mom and my dad, my sister and I went there on the opening day and we were the first family to sign up. Decided to join the School of Rock after I went to go see my cousin perform. After I saw that, I was like, all right, time to go rock and roll. Sydney caught my attention from their first show. I was like, who is that? And we hit it off. I transferred and one of the teachers there, there's like, there's a battle of the bands that we hold every January. Don't take this as your run of the mill battle of the bands. Like we go out for this. I signed up for the audition and I was like, oh, I need a band. And so I handpicked Sydney, Nicole, Alex, the day before we were doing our dress rehearsal. And we were like, we don't have a band name. Someone said doll and we were like, okay, cool. Like that's kind of fun. Let's do something cute, but creepy. And so we tried to come up with a second word and someone said skin. We were like, wait, that's kind of perfect. Came up with a band name, nailed it down. Oh, it was so funny. Cause it was just a little small, like just battle the band's cake, but we were all so excited. I don't think anyone got a perfect score. But we got a 99. I remember a couple people being like, I was here for my friend in another band, but you guys were my favorite. And I was like, I'm not telling anybody, but I'm gonna mention this to someone later. We were playing a bunch of games around Arizona. For like a year. David Ellison noticed and was like, can we talk? I want to manage. And we were all like, yeah, we can talk. So this contract signed, I wanna manage and I wanna get you guys on EMP, the label that he made for us to be on a label. Our first big tour, he had formed a super group. So he was just like, well, can I bring my girls on? We had opened for them and we were direct support. Our first perception of the music industry was so distorted because the last show of the tour was the memorial for Lemmy Kilmeister. That night, Dave Grohl was there. Corey Taylor was there. I found a room, but it was where Dave Grohl and two other dudes were talking. I'm 16. I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk about all this weird shit. And I was like, whew, this is quite a night, isn't it, my friends? <laughs> I knew that shit was happening. I knew that this was going in an upward direction and I was like ready for it, but also at the same time I was scared because I was so at war with it, within myself and I was so at war within my own anxiety. I had crippling anxiety since I was like seven, honestly, and the point where I just like get these attacks where I just can't move. I can't, like, I just, I have to lay down. I have to make sure that I'm centered. Being in a situation where you don't have control, for example, tour, um, really made it horrible. <laughs> but there was a time where I was really struggling I was getting attacks that were three hours long. I was in fight or flight. That would happen multiple times a day. I was sleeping for 13 hours. The girls really had to pick up some slack for me because I was not good. And there was a day where I couldn't stop. We finished the show and I said, Dom, pull over. We're going to a gas station. I am gonna be taken to the hospital. As soon as I left the RV and got into the hospital, I was just like, oh my God, the girls. Oh my God, like I have to, I have to do so, you know, and I, I felt horrible. Uh, Cause I knew I just left. I just left. I literally just like bye. So grateful for like the girls supporting me in a in a time where it was like a really shitty time to leave. Ever since that point in time, I haven't had an anxiety attack more than like 30 minutes. Leading into 2020, we had a tour lined up. 
And that was the tour where I was finally starting to see what fan-wise, like we started to see our, the fruits of our labor like coming into the atmosphere. We were playing headlining shows on the way up to Anti-Flag and people were coming. Our RV broke down, so we couldn't make it to the first Anti-Flag show. As the RV got fixed, we started heading up there and we were like, yo, we might be late. And so they were like, you know what? If you guys get here in time to be direct support, like you guys can just throw and go. And we were on the way. We were like 20 minutes from the border and we get a call from the tour manager of Anti-Flag. He says, turn around and go home. After we had gotten back from going to meet up with Anti Flag and being home around that summer, probably the lowest point of my life. Like, not only was my career just like on hold, but I was like with someone that was really mentally abusive. It's just a horrible cocktail of just like negative depression, and like Sydney was going through it too. The last thing I want is for this to come crumbling down because I know nothing else. I live in this fear a lot of like, it's possible that one day it could go away. And during that point in time, Alex had said that she was going to step down and we were like, okay. And Nicole left the band soon after that and then Sydney and I were just like, what is happening? What are we going to do? Megan and I are so passionate about this that like, we were like, we're fucking doing this. And so I went and spent the entirety of June out in LA and Megan joined me. For us, the point where we started to see optimism was when like the focus of Control Freak, like our new single came, like we were just like planning for that. We step into that music video studio and sitting there like, it's just us two? Whoa. What we knew in our hearts, like, we wrote a song with our producer. If we wrote a song that we really, really loved, we made something that means a lot to us and that works. We're just gonna keep going. And to see that Sid and I like had that power to just make something together without half of our family and have it be great was amazing. You know, my whole life I've always wanted to make a difference. I've always wanted to make a difference. I've always wanted to talk about what goes on in my life to let other people know that they're not alone. I've always been the therapist friend. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna be the therapist friend to all of our fans. But like our fans are more than just fans. Like we've always talked about this, like it's the Rat Pack. Like we are a family, like we are connected to these people. The openness that I have is so much more than just me. The reason why I talk about being sober and straight edge so often is because I want to lead by example and let people know that you're allowed to live this substance-free life if it makes you feel better. For me, like, you know, it's, it's easy to go into the self-doubt and like see everyone else around you succeeding. And you're like looking at your future and you're like, is this going to like go the direction that I want it to go? But then you're like, well, as long as I keep going, where else can I go? Try to calm me down.